Thanks once again for joining me at another math lesson. This one, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be a champion by the end of this one at converting any fraction into a decimal. I can't wait to show you how to do that. But before we begin, make sure your downloaded notes are sitting in front of you and make sure that uh, if you don't have the notes, you're improvising with some paper. Now, before we begin, make sure you clean this, clear the screening process. Make sure you know all this stuff here. For example, can you identify a decimal place value? Can you read, can you read decimal values? Can you do it? I'll show you an example, but if you know what I'm talking about, just give yourself a check mark. Otherwise, look at this maybe as a refresher. Can you name that? It's not decimal two five. It's pronounced, uh, well, you got to read the place values, right? So that's going to be the tenths, and this here is going to be the hundredths, but we don't say both place values. We only say the last one. We only say this one over here. So we say 25, and then we say hundredths. You can also write it out like this. And you can write it as a fraction as 25 hundredths that way. And you have to be able to convert between these two. So if you don't know how to do that yet, you may want to review those lessons, uh, those particular ones before you get on to this one. The second thing, well, we just essentially did that. Can you read decimal values using place value? We just did that. So these two are almost like the same thing. Can you complete long division? Oh my God, nobody likes long division. Well, you have to do it in this part here. You gotta know how to do this long division stuff. So you may wanna review that if you um, don't remember it or maybe just join us in the lesson. You might remember it as we do examples together. And uh, can you make equivalent fractions? Okay. How about can you use a calculator? You're gonna have to use a calculator sometimes in these questions. Now the key concepts. Before you even think about turning a fraction into a decimal, before you even think about it, you have to keep in your mind denominator. Think denominator first. And then ask yourself, can you take that denominator and turn it into a power of 10? Mr. M, what's a power of 10? Any of these are powers of 10. A 10 or a 100 or a 1,000 or a 10,000, any of those are powers of 10. That's step one. If you can do that, like three-fourths, look at the denominator. Can you? Can you turn it into a 10? No. Can you turn it into a 100? Yes. Times by 25. And whatever you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator. Remember I asked you, can you do equivalent fractions? That's how you make equivalent fractions. You do the same to the numerator and denominator. You multiply them by the same number. We get 75 hundredths. Okay. You know that... Uh, this is how you write 75 hundredths. And some of you have learned already that three over four or three fourths is 75, is decimal 75. You just memorized it. Okay, great. But do you know why that works? This is the reason why it works. Because, remember how we read decimals? We don't say this value, we say the last one only. That's the only value we care about. And we say 75 hundredths. How do we read this one? 75 hundredths. They're both hundredths. You know when you write it with a four in the denominator? You can't really tell what place value it is. It's a four, but there's no fourth place value. Place values are tenths and hundredths, like these two here, and thousandths, but not fourths. All right, moving on. Two fifths. What's the first thing I said you got to think about? I said denominator. Think denominator. You may even want to write that down in your notes. Can you turn this into a power of 10? You bet you can. You can turn it into a 10 itself. Multiply by two, multiply this by two. You get four tenths. Decimal four. That's called tenths. That's called tenths, that place value. Excellent. I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you right now are thinking, Mr. M, could I not have turned Instead of turning the denominator into a 10, could I not have turned it into a 100 by doing this? And you bet you could have done that, except you would have gotten 40 over 100. And 40 over 100 would be 40 hundredths, and that would be decimal 40. And you know decimal 40 and decimal 4 are the same value. You can take that zero and knock it off and you don't change the value of the number. So these two here are identical and they're both correct. So yes, you could have done it that way as well. 
How about this one? Let me whip out my laser pointer here. Now, look at the denominator. Can you turn this denominator into a 10? No. Can you turn it into a 100? No. So what do we do? I mean, you could get upset. You can you can maybe maybe complain and whine and bitter about it, but you know what? Look at this sign here. This is the next part. If you cannot convert the denominator into a power of 10, do long division. Because that sign here in the middle, that means divide. So we're going to do the 3 divided by 8. Now, we have a problem here because 8 doesn't go into 3. Like, how do you do 8 into 3? You can't do that. So if you know that 3 and this and that and that, that they're all the same thing, well, why not just put decimal 0 and now it almost looks like a 30 instead of a 3. And 8 goes into 30. You're allowed to do that. Put the decimal on top and then ignore this decimal over here. Ignore that one. Pretend it doesn't exist. Leave that one there, but ignore this one here. And now go 8 into 30. Write your answer over the last digit in 30. Don't put it over here because we're going 30, so you have to put the digit, line it up properly. And we know that 8 goes into 33 times because 3 times 8 is 24. Subtract them. You get 6. 6 left over. But we're not done yet. We have to keep dropping more numbers. And so what do we do? If you need to drop another number and you don't have a digit to drop, it's no problem. You just add a 0 and drop it. Now we have 60 and we know that 8 goes into 60 7 times because 7 times 8 is 56, baby. And I subtract these two. $60 minus $56. I hope you know that's only $4 left. And then uh, we need to drop another digit. No problem. We just add a zero. And then drop it. Now, 8 goes into 40. Look, 5 times. And now we have 8 times 5 is 40. You got zero left over. And that's going to be, oh, we got to put a zero there just for a good measure. Put a zero here. Because we got to fill the place value. And we have our answer. It's decimal 375. Who knows how to read this properly? All right, here's what it is. It's 307, no, not and, 375 thousandths. That's the tenths and the hundredths and the thousandths. That's going to be your answer. And these two are equivalent forms. Convert this into a decimal. Now, some of you right now are like in a, in like your heartbeat's gone up and your pulse is like pulsating on your forehead and your temples. And you're like, oh my God, it's a mixed fraction, Mr. M. I don't know how to do this. You know how to do this. I'm going to show you how to do this, and you're going to get this. Watch. We have two holes and one-third. Out of these two, which is the fraction? The one-third. So focus on it. Put one divided by three. So now we got one. Now look, three doesn't go into one, right? But we know that this and this, they're all the same thing. So how about we do this? And then pop the decimal up. And then ignore the bottom one. You can even scribble it out. I don't care. Now it's a 10. 3 goes into 10. 3 times. Because 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract them. You get a dollar left. We need to drop another number. No, no number. No problem. Add a 0. Drop the 0 down here. Now you get another 10. 3 goes into 10. 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. You get 1 left over. We need to keep dropping some numbers here. No number, no problem. We'll just add another zero. But you see there's a pattern developing because three goes into 10, again, three times. And that makes nine again. And you get one. And like, this is a waste of my time now. I, 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 like, it goes on forever. It's decimal three, 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 three. So the heck with it. Like, let's get rid of it. We know what it is. Now, you see how I put this zero there? We did it in the last example. But you know what? Write this down in your notes. This zero should not be here in this example because it's telling us that we have zero holes. Do we have zero holes? If this is pizza that I'm talking about, do I have zero pizzas? No. I have two whole pizzas, baby. I have two of them. It's right here, two holes. So we're going to kick the zero out. And we're going to put the two instead. And now it's two 0.333. Now, we know the three goes forever, right? Okay, let's drop all these threes. Keep just one of them. Give them a little hat. That hat tells us that it goes on forever. 
It's a code. You may want to pause the video and see if you could do it on your own. Otherwise, let's see if we could do this. Do we need long division here? No, because I can just times this by two and get a power of 10 and then keep my equivalent fraction. I got two tenths and then that would have made 0 0.2. That's two tenths. That's tenths right there. So that's my answer. And some of you may have multiplied by 20 instead, and you would have gotten 20 out of 100. And we know 20 out of 100 is going to be 0 0.20. And that is also another legitimate answer. This is a better answer because it has less numbers for the same value, but this is also gonna get you good marks as well. well let's move on to this one here, 2 ninths. Do we need to get long division involved in this? Do we need that? Well, let's think about it. Can you turn nine into a 10 by multiplying? No, you can't. Can you turn it into 100? No. How about 1,000? No, you can't. So you know what you do? You're stuck with long division, baby. You got to go two divided by nine. And uh, let's from now put 2.000. Let's put a bunch of zeros there. Put the zero on top. Sorry, the decimal on top. Scratch this one out. We don't need him anymore. And then start. Nine goes into 20 two times. That makes 18, subtract them, drop the next number, and uh, do it again. 9 goes into 20, again, two times, you get 18, subtract them, drop the next number, 9 go. okay, we know what's happening here. It's going to be 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, forever and ever and ever. We'll put a 0 here for good measure, and uh, do we need all the 2s? No, we just need one of them with a little hat. That's our answer. Let's move on to the last one. We got three holes and seven eighths. Okay, we're gonna focus our attention on this one. We're gonna ignore the hole for a while. Just ignore this one here and start doing, uh, well, let's see, can we turn this into a 10, this eight? No, can you turn it into 100? No, you can't. So we're stuck doing long division again. We're gonna go seven divided by eight. We'll put a bunch of uh, zeros here. Make sure you're writing this with me. I'll pop the zero up here, scribble this one out, we don't need him, and begin. How many times does eight go into 70? I think eight times, that makes 64. And then uh, subtract 70 and 64, you get six, drop the next zero, and you're gonna get eight into 60, that makes seven times, because seven times eight is 56. You subtract these, you get four, Drop the next zero, you get eight into 40 is gonna be five times and that makes exactly, when you multiply them, you get 40 exactly. And that makes a remainder of zero. Look, I take my three holes, I put it right here, and I write my answer down, not 0 0.875, but three. All right, we'll go 3.875. That's the equivalent decimal form. I hope you learned a lot in this lesson, guys. Look, after you're done this, by now, you should know how to convert any fraction that I can ever...